Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Today I want to do another lore video on GTA 4, and the topic of this one is Jerry McCreary, the leader of the McCreary family. Now we know that Jerry ends up in prison near the end of the game, but the question is, who exactly ratted him out? Ratting out means that someone talked to the authorities and gave them testimony, evidence, or both incriminating Jerry. Now this video is going to be going on a theory, so I will say I don't know 100%, but I do have a pretty good idea of who ratted Jerry out and why, and I'll explain. So let's watch the cutscene with Jerry first getting paranoid. Nico! You made it, huh? <sighs> well, I'll leave you to your men's talk. I hope you impress each other. Hey, look at me. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. You'll do fine. Fine at what? Some gimp work for the Pegarinos. I owed them. Oh, please. I do it myself, but I think I'm being watched by the cops. Someone. I think I'm about to get pinched again. Shit, really? Yeah, it's happened before. I keep seeing the same car watching. All it means is someone's been speaking, we just have to find out who and make them stop. In the meantime, it chill things out for a bit. So, I need your help. So from that cutscene, it seems that Jerry is getting paranoid that someone is onto him. He, he keeps saying that there's the same car that's watching. This is an indication of law enforcement surveilling him. And later on, we find out that this paranoia was in fact correct because he was arrested. But what does Jerry say that he was arrested for? Let's take a listen to right here. Time of my life. Goddamn time of my life. What you up for? Bunch of shit I never did because I was always a well-behaved family man who occasionally liked to drink, but nothing more. Of course, like us all. Like us all. So Jerry says he was arrested for armed robbery and racketeering. Now armed robbery, this is pretty straightforward, but racketeering, is this is a very complicated crime. It can be anything from running a protection money ring, an illegal gambling den, a fence for stolen goods, or even murder for hire. Judge, judging by the fact that Jerry doesn't mention murder, which is the most serious crime, we can assume he hasn't been charged with that. I think we can rule out the UL paper contact with this, because remember that Nico was working for Jerry, and he did kill a lot of people. He killed a lot of Angela and he also whacked the Ancelotti capital regime, also killed some Albanian gangsters to frame it, um, to frame the Ancelotti killing on them. Now, the UL paper contact, or the IAA, they're based on the CIA who were watching Nico for a long time, and they were aware of his criminal activities, and they kept him from getting arrested. So I don't think they would be interested in bringing down Jerry, as this doesn't benefit them much. They're much more worried about terrorism, and in fact, Nico killed a bunch of people for Jerry, so Jerry doesn't mention murder. So where does this leave us? We have four people that know the most about Jerry's activities. These people are Packy, Francis McCreary, Ray Bacino, and Derek McCreary. I am very confident that the person who ratted out Jerry is one of these four. Now, I think Packy, he can be eliminated right away. I don't think he has anything to do with this. The only reason I had him up originally is because he knows of Jerry's activities. Whoever this rat is, this rat has given the police a lot of information. Now, I know some people are going to say, but it could be someone completely different that we never heard of. That's true. It could be someone never brought up in the story. However, remember this. Whoever this rat is, they know a lot about Jerry because the police started watching him. They didn't start watching him out of nowhere. They got a tip. If this is someone, for instance, involved in Jerry's racketeering crimes, I doubt they would know about his armed robberies. The point that I'm making is that there isn't many people that can link all these crimes to Jerry. There are people who can link maybe one or two crimes to him, but not a whole network. This is why I think Francis, Ray, and Derek are perfect suspects here, and we're going to examine these um, three clearly right now. Now we move on to the first real suspect, who is Francis McCreary. Now I know a lot of people are going to suspect Francis because he's a police officer. Francis is Jerry's other brother. And not only is Francis a police officer, he's the deputy commissioner, but he most likely knows a lot about what Jerry is doing. Francis, I am fully confident, isn't the one who got Jerry arrested, nor is he involved in any way. How do I know this? There's a few reasons. The biggest reason is actually what Packy says about Francis. Take a listen here. I hear that Francis McCreary is your brother. Fucking Frankie, my brother. He may have a badge, but I tell you for a fact, he's as crooked as the rest of us McCreary's. More so. At least we ain't fucking hypocrites. Kate's the only decent one. I can believe that. You know Frankie, do you? I got a story for you if you do. Another fucking story. Shut up, Gordon. So, Nico, when Francis and Gerald was growing up, Frankie becomes an altar boy. He swears to this day that he wanted to serve the Lord. 
Jerry knows the truth, though. He only put on that cassock so he could pocket the change in the collection plate. Fact. That's Francis, down to a fucking T. I don't even know if he realizes what a crook he is. That sounds like the Francis McCreary I met. I bet. Model community leader in my ass. You're just worried he'll start clamping down on you, ain't you, Paggy? I'd like to see him try it. Not gonna happen with the things Jerry knows. Here we are, boys. Moment of fucking truth. So you heard that from Packy. Packy says that Jerry has a lot of dirt on Francis, and Jerry has it just in case Francis ever tries anything. Then he can use that against Francis. Francis would never risk arresting Jerry, even if he could do it without Jerry suspecting him. He simply wouldn't risk it. There is also this point. Listen to what Francis says here. Why didn't you tell me Derek was back? What? Why didn't you tell me you was hanging around with my brother? I assumed if you cared, you'd have found out. Well, I have found out. Jesus, you know Derek's not well. No? No, he's sick. He always was. He's always off getting involved in someone else's fight, making a fool of himself, betraying people, going into hiding. He's an idiot and a coward. It's not my business. Whatever he stood for, he betrayed. He only left here in the first place because he was caught stealing from the Mafia. He's a pathetic wretch. Okay, I got it, so... Now, he's gonna ruin my life. If it wasn't bad enough having a bunch of crooks for brothers, now I've got him threatening to talk to a journalist about his family, about me! Well, tell him to be quiet. I am trying to become the commissioner of police. I'd be a laughingstock. Cop with the famous snitching traitor for a brother. Ugh. Francis says that he wants to become the commissioner of the police. In New York City, which Liberty City is based off, this is a very high and prestigious position in the police, in which he would be oversighting the entire Liberty City Police Department. So in other words, Francis values his career extremely, and he would most likely keep tabs on Jerry on the side, just to see what he's up to. Francis also has Nico kill Goldberg, who is going to bring an entire case against him. So Francis, he really values his career, and he doesn't want anything slipping out that could ruin his chances. He also tries to have Nico kill Derek. Take a look at this cutscene here. You know, the crooks I can handle. See, that I can spin. But not uh, this. Not this. Uh, you got the big problem then. Me? Uh-uh. We, my friend. We. You stop it. <coughs> stop? Stop. Kill your brother. He's already dead. Just put him out of his misery. Fuck you. No, fuck you, pal. I'm gonna meet him in the courtyard park off Bismarck and Lancet. Deal with him. Make him a tragedy. Not a disaster. Do it, or I will put you away. Oh, don't push me. Francis tries to have Derek killed because he says that Derek is a threat to him. He says that Derek is going to ruin his life. Nico can of course choose to kill Francis, but if Nico kills Derek, he does this. Officer, come on, clear the area, clear the area! Derek, shit! He's my brother! Francis pretends to mourn over Derek, and would most likely spin his story that Derek, his brother, was targeted by gangsters because he wants to be a commissioner of the police. This is what Francis would do. If Francis wanted to get rid of Jerry, he wouldn't um, have him arrested. He would have him killed. And not only that, but imagine how bad that would look for him. We don't know what Francis's life is like if Nico spares him after, but I'm guessing he never becomes the commissioner of the police because Jerry got arrested. Imagine how bad that would look if the police commissioner's brother got arrested for armed robbery and racketeering. If a close family member of yours does something really bad, people will look down on you and judge you, even if you had nothing to do with it. So arresting Jerry would be of no benefit to Francis. The only motive Francis has is to get rid of the dirt that Jerry has on him. But like I said, if he wanted to do that, he would have Jerry killed, not arrested. And ju judging by the fact that Jerry never releases that evidence, p proves that he knows Francis had nothing to do with his arrest. It would destroy his career. So Francis is eliminated as a suspect. The next suspect that we have is Ray Bacino. Why Ray? 
Ray is a capital regime, which is a captain in the Pegarino family. Ray is actually suspected of being a rat himself by his own boss, Pegarino. Now we know that the Pegarinos and the McCreary's have a close relationship. The first time that we actually see Ray is in Packy's first mission, Harboring a Grudge. Packy works for Ray Bacino and does several jobs for him, including stealing the truck of pills and robbing the Ancelotti's. Packy himself even says he doesn't trust Ray. Who are we welcoming and what have they got that makes this drive worth the effort? We're welcoming some of our cousins from the East, but we don't know what it is that they're bringing in. Exactly. All we know is that it's worth a dollar or two. My brother Gerald had word about it through this Italian, Ray Bacino. He gave us the heads up in exchange for a cut of the haul. What makes you think that the information is legit? First off, I don't trust this guinea for a second. We wouldn't be working for him if our family still had the same status it did back in the day, but that's another story. Someone like Ray could do serious damage to both the Pegarino family and the McCreary gang if they were to talk to the authorities. Remember what Phil says. I'm sorry about this. Hey, no problem. So you're a friend of Ray's? <laughs> a friend? No, oh, I do some work for him. <laughs> no, I mean a friend. I don't understand. Whatever you say, he's the slime ball, but uh, he pays. <laughs> sure, pal, sure. Listen to me. The thing about Ray is, he's a good earner. He talks a lot of shit, but he's a good earner. Have you? He's a rat, doing an impression of a man. <laughs> you scared this thing for bucks? No, but we can be pretty sure it's clean. Chill out. All right, all right. It's just that if we get caught on this one, you and me is going down for a long time. And that means that certain people is going to assume we're rat, which means we'll get whacked. You're working with the wrong people if you expect them to whack you if you go inside. Where's the trust, Phil? It's about survival. If someone who knew what I knew got flipped, then the whole organization will go down. Whacking someone who catches some heavy time is just an insurance policy. And it don't help that not everyone in the organization is pulling in the same direction. You mean that someone in the family would see someone else going inside as an opportunity to get ahead? You're a smart guy. One guy that knows a lot has the potential to bring the organization down. Near the end of the game, the Pegarinos start to have law enforcement problems. Here's what Pegarino says on it. Discussing pest control. Well, I've given you my advice, Peg. You do what you think is best. I agree. Finally. I mean, I don't agree with what he says. I agree that you know best. Excuse me? Relax. I didn't mean nothing by it. Look, either we make the right call or we all end up in prison anyway. Well, your crap ain't gonna do me no favors. Be careful. I'll see you later. Boss, gentlemen. You're only an associate, Phil. Remember that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, tough Boss, guy. I gotta tell you this. He's not straight. Right before I came in here, I saw him talking to Angie again. You better leave. Uh, I need to speak to Nico. Sure, boss. But, uh, think about what I said. I will. You know? Trust me on that. We got real problems. Police are all over us. Maybe you heard. I got served papers today. Phil yesterday. We got a couple of boys in jail. I think they might squeal. Somebody's talking. Wants us out of the picture. Maybe John Gravelli. Or them Ancelotti's. Somebody got to my people. So what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I gotta shut someone up and show people I mean business. I've known Phil a long time. He's straight, more or less. I know him and Angie are friends, but that don't worry me too much. Hmm. Maybe he's too straight. Then there's Ray. I don't know. I don't trust him. But he's a good earner. I know he's got his eye on the big prize. But he's no dummy. Him and Phil hate each other. I gotta think about it. Okay. I'll give you a call. Whoever I say to go see, go see him. And shut him up! Now the feds are going after the Pegarinos. However, the Pegarinos' legal problems, I doubt they come from Ray. People point to the feds jumping Phil, Nico, and Frankie when they are about to move to heroin and point to Ray. However, I doubt that this is because of Ray. Now the reason people think Ray told the feds about this is because he listens in on the conversation Nico and Phil have about stealing the heroin truck from the triads. But Phil doesn't tell Ray where that truck is to be left, and I doubt he would. Why would he? Phil doesn't even like Ray. 
However, this isn't proof that Ray snitched. You don't have to be a cop to find a heroin shipment. Here's what I think happened. A bunch of triad gangsters were shot dead in a very urban environment, which Alderney is based in New Jersey. This would have countless witnesses, not necessarily on Nico's face, but witnesses would see a truck speeding away. You know, that's obvious. So here's what the police know. A bunch of gangsters are dead, like I said, and a truck was speeding away. Anyone can figure out at this point that whatever was on that truck was not only illegal, but was worth a lot of money. So the police begin, begin combing the area, looking for the truck until they find Frankie and start spying on him. That's how I think they found the truck, not Ray. But what is Ray's motive? Why would he snitch? The motive may be right here. You better leave. Uh, I need to speak to Nico. Sure, boss. But uh, think about what I said. I will. You know? Trust me on that. You mean that someone in the family would see someone else going inside as an opportunity to get ahead? You're a smart guy. So that is the final cutscene we see of Ray before he is killed. Do you notice anything about Ray? He's always trying to suck up to Pegorino. He wants Pegorino's favor, and he hates Phil. He wants to be considered Pegorino's second and possible successor. In that final cutscene, when Pegorino tells Ray to leave and that he has to talk to Nico, Ray looks at Nico one final time, and his eyes are clearly nervous. He's scared about getting whacked which means killed. Ray is a good earner. He makes a lot of money for the family, and I can only really see two motives of him snitching. That would be if he got arrested, but there's no proof that the feds picked him up at any point in the story. And even if we look at um, Ray's criminal record, there's no indication here that he would possibly snitch. And even after Gerald is arrested, he's still demanding the diamonds from Nico and Packy, which you think if he was snitching, the police would be watching him at this point. The other motive is he's scared he's going to be killed, so he takes his chances with the feds. Martinez does a very similar thing in Vice City stories. The main reason the Pegarinos got so much heat on them was because of what Pegarino says here. Bad about Marco and Pete. Marco and Pete? Oh yeah, those guys didn't make it, did they? Well, too fucking bad. They knew what they were signed on for. Weren't complaining on the way out, were they? No, they weren't. Happy to be on board with the skipper. Yeah, well, they seemed like good kids. Ah, these kids come and go. It ain't worth paying attention to them until they prove they can survive. I just move on and hire some wannabe wise guys off the street. It's that simple? Has to be. I only start paying attention to my crew when they start putting me in an awkward position, either because they know too much in my rat, or because they got too much power and they're too smart to get themselves clipped. Ray was nothing to me until he started earning big and sticking his nose in places that didn't belong. Rats seem to get everywhere you don't want them to be. The only way you know is by finding their shit all over the place in the morning. That's right, they hire anyone right off the streets. Even when mafias hire associates, these are the lowest level, and not te they're not technically a member of the mafia, so they still have to be careful. Even an associate that knows important things can do serious damage to the organization. The heat was coming from Anthony, Pegarino's bodyguard. The police picked him up and had him wear a wire. That's why Pegarino and Phil got served papers. Anthony recorded both of them at the house talking. Pegarino is so dumb thinking that killing Anthony automatically makes the heat go away, so he's looking for another rat. Think about it this way. If Ray really was the rat, do you know who the feds would target first? It would be Pegarino, the boss of Ray's own organization. Not Jerry McCreary. Jerry and Ray, even though they did not meet in the game once, the police database say that they do have a close relationship. And remember what Jerry was originally locked up for. Armed robbery and racketeering. Somebody like Jerry is smart. They aren't going to tell Ray something he doesn't need to know. Why would, why would he tell something he, to, to him something he doesn't need to know? The armed robbery might be a tip that Ray gave them. But the racketeering, I doubt it has anything to do with Ray. Ray wouldn't know about the racketeering activities Jerry has. He might have an idea, but certainly not enough info to get him arrested. And remember this, Packy directly met with Ray. If Ray was the rat, Packy would have been thrown in prison right alongside Jerry. The feds would have wanted to take down the entire McCreary family. So while Ray is suspicious, and it's a possibility he could be a snitch, I doubt he's the one who ratted out Jerry in the end. The final suspect that we have is Derek McCreary. This is Jerry's older brother, and the one who I think ratted him out. I remember when I talked about me making this video about Jerry on my live streams, and a few of you guys said I bet it was Derek, and I agree with that assumption. It probably was Derek. But why would Derek rat out his own brother? His own brother. Why exactly? Derek's a little different than Francis. So let's watch Derek's first mission cutscene. This isn't his first cutscene, but the first mission he gives Nico. I told you I'm not gonna go. I'm your brother. I'm supposed to take care of my family. Hey! I'm beyond being taken care of now. 
Hey! 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 Your brother said you needed a hand. <laughs> Looks like you need more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh. <sighs> hey! Ah! Wake up, you fucking junkie! I'm awake. I was just wishing you'd leave. Hey! Hey! Sit down. That's pretty good gear. I'm pretty high. Good for you. Okay. Don't get sanctimonious on me. Okay. Why do you do this to yourself? Because it feels nice. Because it feels better to be high than not. Does it stop you thinking? <coughs> it stops you caring. Which is even better. <coughs> so... What do you care about? I care about getting people back who claimed I was a grass. People who used that to steal shit off me. Huh. Maybe that's what your brother was talking about. When they said you needed help taking care of all the business. Sure. I mean... <clears throat> I ain't a saint. I ain't a man of principle. I... I messed up, but I tried. I made a mistake, but I admitted it. We all make mistakes. Exactly! And this guy is still threatening to kill me and my family! What's his name? Uh, uh. Bucky Sligo. Bucky Sligo. I heard he was living in Alderney. Can you get access to police computer? Sure. Find the fuck. Shut him and his pals up. Ugh. Okay. Uh, his pals up. So as you guys can see from that cutscene, it's obvious Derek is a drug addict. He's addicted to heroin. But not just heroin, he's also an alcoholic. He is mixing alcohol and heroin and having these bizarre dreams where he's repeating past events to himself. And what does he say at the start? Listen carefully here. I told you I'm not gonna go. I'm your brother. I'm supposed to take care of my family. Hey! I'm beyond being taken care of now. Hey! 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 Your brother said you needed a hand. <laughs> Looks like you'll need more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh. <sighs> he says, I told you. I'm not gonna go. I'm your brother. I'm supposed to take care of my family. I'm beyond being taken care of now. What does this mean exactly? Is he admitting to snitching here and depressed over it? This could actually be a reference to him either leaving for Ireland, or when he ratted out his friends, or just now when he possibly ratted out Jerry. Unfortunately, it's unknown, but he seems to feel guilty over something. First off, let's hear what Francis says that Derek did that made him leave for Ireland in the late 80s. Wait! Wait! Didn't you tell me you was hanging around with my brother? I assumed if you cared, you'd have found out. Well, I have found out. Jesus, you know Derek's not well. No? No, he's sick. He always was. He's always off getting involved in someone else's fight, making a fool of himself, betraying people, going into hiding. He's an idiot and a coward. It's not my business. Whatever he stood for, he betrayed. He only left here in the first place because he was caught stealing from the Mafia. He's a pathetic wretch! That's right, Francis says Derek got caught stealing from the Mafia, which I believe is true. Life. If it wasn't bad enough having a bunch of crooks for brothers, now I've got him threatening to talk to a journalist about his family, about me! Well, tell him to be quiet. I am trying to become the commissioner of police. I'd be a laughingstock. A cop with a famous snitching traitor for a brother. So I'm sorry about playing this cutscene again, guys, but it's actually very important to understanding Derek and his personality. And everything that Derek said about Bucky Sligo, he says that Bucky Sligo is plotting to kill him and his family. That's true, that Bucky Sligo is plotting to kill him and his family. But Derek isn't telling Nico the whole story. And what he's not telling Nico is that Bucky Sligo and 
Aiden O'Malley, another guy that Derek actually mentioned. So Bucky, he has Bucky killed in his first mission, and he has Aiden killed in his final mission. These are two guys that used to be part of the IRA. The IRA is the Irish Republican Army. This is a terrorist group that is in Northern Ireland. Derek was actually a, a member of this group. And what actually happened was they came back to America in 1995. And what ended up happening was they got caught for some kind of robbery. And Derek ended up snitching on both Bucky and Aiden. Aiden got sentenced to 20 years in prison, but Bucky, on the other hand, the charges never stuck to him. So Bucky has found out that Derek has actually returned to America. That actually might be a reason that Derek returned back to Ireland, because Derek was in Ireland at one point. He was in Ireland in the late 80s, he came back to America briefly in the mid-90s, and then he left to Ireland. That might be the reason that he left, because Bucky wanted him dead for snitching on him and Aiden. Eric returns, Bucky finds out about this, Bucky wants him dead. Then Derek tells the story to Nico, Nico feels bad for him, and Nico ends up killing Bucky. Now how do I know this is true? How do I know that Derek is lying? How do I know that he's really a rat? Well, take a look at this for instance, Packy knows the truth as well. Packy knows that Derek is a rat. Listen to what he says here in reply to Aiden. Out you come, old boy. The cliffs. The sea air, I really am free. I could cry. You've made me a happy man, boys. Now it's time to tell me who asked you to do this. Derek McCreary. He's my brother. Derek? But he ratted me out. He's the reason I ended up in that place to start with, the spineless. So you thought you'd talk about him? He's my brother, and guys like you are killing him. Nico? Get ready, dear old Aiden. So Packy's gonna drive away now. Please, I just want to be free. Now, Aiden, it seems like he's a character that you could spare, but in reality, he's not. You know, it would have been an interesting random encounter if he was actually a sparable he's a character. Rat, Derek McCreary. Always has been, always will be. So Packy knows that Derek is a rat. But now here's the question. Packy knows Derek is a rat. Francis knows Derek is a rat. And it's important. I'm not talking about Jerry in regards to this, that he ratted on Jerry. I'm talking about that he was rat in the past to both Aiden and to Bucky. Both Francis and Packy know that Derek is a rat. But does Jerry know this? That's the question. Take a listen to what Packy says here. What's going on, Nico? Usual kind of chaos. Sure, sure. Chaos we all know about. Jerry was the only one who ever tried to live beyond the chaos. What makes him different? I'm not sure, but it didn't do him much good either way. I think it was because of Derek. Why? Because Derek was a grass in England. He was involved in that business and he grassed on some people to avoid doing some serious time. And then went into hiding for years. I did not know that. No, he spun it different, but that was the truth. A grass to avoid doing time. That's why Jerry won't bend. He sees it as penance for the sins of his brother. Crazy fucking idiot. All right, boy? Yes. Good. How do you do it? I went into a situation full of optimism, full of naivete. I got burnt. Look at me. Like smack on a fucking spoon. Well... How do you manage? I don't know that I got off so lightly. Mm, uh, we all got our demons. Aiden O'Malley. What about Aiden O'Malley? I heard he's being moved. <coughs> Maybe this is our time. Put all this crap to bed. Get off the drugs. Live with the memories. Aiden's being moved by Van. From the bacon factory. He's been talking shit about me. Back to the Albany State Correctional Facility. Please, Nico, boy, just this last one. Please. Sure, Derek. You and me, we're the same. The same. The same. We're the same, you and me. So right there, Jerry knows. Jerry knows that Derek ratted out Bucky and Aiden. He's very well aware of that. And now, Packy says that 
Jerry will never bend. That's a slang term for ratting because of what Derek did. He thinks that it will bring the family great shame. And on top of that, when Packy says that Derek was a grass, that means that he was a rat. So Packy is well aware of this. He's admitted to it. Francis knows about this. And Jerry, all three brothers know about this. Nico wasn't that informed about it at first, but Derek is a rat. And if you want even more proof that Derek actually ratted out both Bucky and Aiden, take a look at all of their criminal records. So right here on the screen, I'm going to actually have Derek's criminal record. These records can actually be found on the Liberty City um, Police Department website in the game, and you can actually search up all the characters in the game. So look, look at Derek right here. This is Derek's police record. 1970, disorderly conduct. 1971, civil disobedience. 1974, resisting arrest. 1978, armed robbery. 1980, possession controlled substance cocaine. 1985, criminal possession weapons explosives. Now, that last charge right there, 1985, that's not something that you go to prison for just a few years for. That's something you go to prison for a decade for carrying explosives. That shows that you're planning on doing something really bad. And notice that right below that, it says police informant. This might be the point in which Derek actually flipped. Now, what I think might have happened is there's, I see one of two possibilities. Derek left to go to Ireland in the late 80s. And I can't imagine that he would have only served a few years for carrying explosives. So what I think happened is I think he flipped at this point because it says police informant right below that. He was possibly spying on Bucky and Aiden in Ireland or other criminals in Ireland and maybe possibly even working with the uh, British police because they said that Packy said that he had actually snitched in England as well. So he was a snitch in England and he was a snitch in America. Or it's possible the other option that he might have just fled to Ireland just to avoid the charges. That's also another possibility. But it says police informant here. So I think if he would have fled, it probably would have said right here that he actually fled to um, Ireland. Ireland and then traveled to Northern Ireland. So then Derek ends up coming back in 1995 and in 1995 that's when he snitches on Bucky. Now let's take a look at Bucky's record here. A link to criminal underworld in Ireland and Irish American criminal based in Dukes and Alderneys. Okay so similar to Derek. Uh, 1970 disorderly conduct, 1971 civil disobedience, resisting arrest, 1974, 1978 armed robbery, 1986 uh, grand larceny. And if you notice these dates are actually the exact same that Derek has. So Bucky he was there with Derek as he was getting arrested. In 1999, he was for armed robbery, but then it says associate of Derek McCreary and Aiden O'Malley. Now look at what it says. Suspected in a string of robberies for which O'Malley was convicted, but despite McCreary's testimony, charges did not stick. So even though Derek provided the police with evidence and testified against Bucky, he was let off. The charges did not stick, so Aiden ended up going to prison for that. Bucky was found not guilty of that. Recently suspected of running a small-time car stealing and larceny operation, Alderney. Okay, let's take a look at Aiden's record now. Aiden O'Malley, um, linked to criminal underworld, same as um, uh, same as Derek right there, and it says um, civil disobedience. That's a different year than them. 1974, resisting arrest. So he was there with Derek and Bucky as they were resisting arrest. And 1995, grand larceny, multiple counts. Now I think that Rockstar made an error here because it says 1995 grand larceny, and on Bucky's record it says that Bucky um, avoided charges that Aiden was um, uh, thrown in prison for for robberies. Now grand larceny, that's not a robbery. Grand larceny is major theft. So it's when you steal something worth thousands of dollars. That's what grand larceny. And there's multiple counts here. Now, robbery is when there's an actual confrontation with people, when there's physical force and threat involved. So I think that they made a mistake here of grand larceny. Um, so it, it, I'm going to assume that it's robberies that Aiden is in, is in prison for. So Aiden got sentenced to 20 years in prison for that. He got sentenced for that. And what ended up happening was Bucky, like I said, Bucky got off. Bucky didn't get... Um, uh, didn't get found guilty on that. And so Bucky finds out Derek is back in the country. Bucky is planning on getting payback on him. So I think this is pretty much proof of Derek's just of Derek's um snitching behavior towards Bucky and Aiden and also in England. And don't get me wrong, Bucky and Aiden, these guys are terrible people. You know, these guys, you know, the, uh, these guys are some really, really bad guys. You know, these guys deserve to be in prison. But the point that I'm making here is that these were the Derek's best friends. These are some of his good friends that he spent countless years with since the 70s. He spent si since the 70s with these guys, and he was going to rat them out like that. And look, Derek didn't rat them out out of the goodness of his heart. He didn't rat them out because he had a change in conscience. He, he didn't rat them out because he realized he was part of this dangerous, evil terrorist organization. He ratted them out because he, it was his own, to save his own skin. 
Derek was going to be thrown in prison, and instead of getting, being thrown in prison, he decided to become a police informant. So Derek didn't do this out of the kindness of his heart. He did it because he was going to face some hard time. That's why he ratted out Bucky and um uh, and Bucky and Aiden. I don't think Nico's Nico of anything. I don't think Nico should feel guilty about what he did to Aiden and Bucky because these were both really bad guys. But like I said, Derek did snitch, snitch on these guys. Hey Derek, apparently your guy hangs out at the burger shop in the Alderley. Go check it out. Make sure his boys are there. I want them all to pay. What if he's alone? Keep the police call. So notice how Derek said I didn't rat them out. Well, I beg to differ on that, Derek. And now here's the question. Okay, professional, you've proven to us that Derek has a history of snitching. He's ratted out other people again. But would Derek really rat out Jerry? Why would he rat out Jerry? I think it's actually simple on why um uh, Jerry was actually ratted out by Derek. Why? I think it's because the police picked him up again. That's why. And think about it this way. Derek is a drug addict. He, he isn't just a drug addict. He's a major heroin addict. And he's also an alcoholic at the same time. He spends his time in parks, getting high, in the middle of the open. Right where everyone can see him. E everybody that walks by Derek in that park can see that he's a drug addict. It is so obvious. So any rookie cop on the street could easily catch Derek. Any rookie cop can easily bring him in. And they can flip Derek easily on that. They can tell Derek, you're facing numerous years in prison for heroin. They could just throw that at him. They could make up some charge saying, oh, you're going to face this and this in prison. And Derek, I can imagine, he would flip like that. He would say, oh, no, I'm not. I don't want to go to prison again. Because Derek has a history of being in prison. He's like, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to go in prison again. What can I do? Well, the police will tell him, we want information on your brother, Jerry. We want to know what exactly he's doing. And look, to be fair, I know that Derek does partake in criminal activities. He does participate in the bank job. But this might be, you know, to benefit himself because he gets money from it, obviously, and also to gather information on Jerry. Obviously, he's not going to tell the police that he's involved in a bank robbery, but he might be gathering information on Jerry. Now, Jerry knows that Derek is a rat, but despite that, Jerry still trusts Derek that Derek won't betray him. And so he's perfectly confident in talking to Derek about family secrets, about criminal activities that the family is involved. They're talking about a damn bank robbery in the kitchen. So Jerry does feel confident in talking to Derek, even though um, he knows that Derek has a history of ratting people out. So that's what I think happened. I think it's a big red flag because when somebody is a drug addict, they need, um, uh, they constantly want that drug. And in this case, heroin. Heroin is a really nasty and evil drug. It's a really, really bad drug. There's other bad drugs out there, but heroin is one of the worst. And I know some people are going to say, but Packy is a cocaine addict. Isn't that, you know, isn't he just as vulnerable as Derek to snitching? Not really, because heroin is much worse than um, cocaine. You know, the withdrawal effects of heroin are just much worse than withdrawal effects of um, of cocaine. And Packy, it doesn't seem, yes, he is a user, but it doesn't even seem like he's an addict. It doesn't. You know, Packy, um, you would, Packy would have to tell you that he uses of cocaine because I wouldn't be able to tell that Packy uses cocaine unless he admits to it. But Derek, you, he doesn't even need to tell you that he uses heroin. Everyone can pretty much tell that he uses heroin. And when Nico actually asks Derek, why does he do this to himself? Why does he use heroin? What does Derek actually say to Nico? Here's Derek's response. Okay. Why do you do this to yourself? Because it feels nice. <clears throat> because it feels better to be high than not. Does it stop you thinking? <coughs> it stops you caring. Which is even better. <coughs> so. It stops you caring. That's why he uses heroin. It stops you caring. 
That type of response that, that he just gave. So basically, Derek's saying that he can use heroin and that he doesn't have to worry about anything at all. He doesn't have, have to have any kind of conscience. So at that point, would he rat out on Jerry? I think he would. If it was to avoid prison time, I'm entirely, I, 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 I'm, I entirely believe that he would rat out Jerry in order to avoid prison time. So drug addicts, it's just a major red flag um, uh, here. It's a major red flag. He's a drug addict. He has a history of snitching on other people. You know, he, he's had people killed that he snitched on. So I think it's entirely possible. And I'll talk about something else here. I want to talk about The Sopranos for a little bit. Now, The Sopranos, um, this is a TV, it's a mafia TV show that actually inspired a lot of the mafia in, um, uh, in GTA 4. And there's actually one, um, Christopher Moltisanti, who is actually a capo regime or a captain in, 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 the, um, in the Soprano family. Now, what ends up happening is near the end of the show, um, Christopher has a history of heroin problems. He's a heroin addict. He has a history of that. And Tony forces him to go to rehab. He tells him that he has to clean up his act. He tells him he, goes, he has to go to rehab. Chris gets out of rehab, but even after he gets out of rehab, he ends up eventually going back to using heroin. And what happens is he's driving the boss, Tony, home one day. And what happens is Chris slides off the road. Tony realizes that something's wrong with his eyes. He realizes he possibly may be on drugs. The car gets flipped. And then Tony, at that point, is told by Christopher that you have to help me pass my a drug test. The police are going to take my license away if they find out that I was on drugs. That's what he basically admits to the boss right there. He admits to the boss that he was on drugs driving him. And Tony just has to look in the back seat and he sees that a branch is actually pierced where Chris's um, daughter would be sitting, where his uh, baby daughter would be sitting. Now, here's the thing. Tony doesn't care about the, the branch hitting, the, um, um, hitting the, the baby seat, but it shows just how much of a liability and how much of a risk that um, a Chris is in this TV show because he's driving the boss while he's high. If he's willing to do something this stupid, what else could he do that, that, that stupid? So what does Tony do? Tony ends up suffocating him. It makes it look like he had died in the car accident. Tony basically killed Chris because he was a liability. And that's the way that Derek, you could interpret Derek's character as. He's a drug addict. And so he's constantly looking for heroin. He's constantly looking for, a, for another fix for himself. And so he's a liability. The police could easily pick him up. They could tell him he's facing numerous charges and they can make him a bunch of charges. And Derek will believe that because he's so high on heroin all the time. And so he will just um, snitch on Jerry. Now that whole plan that, that Packy came up with to kill Aiden, do you really think that Derek could come up with a plan like that? I doubt that Derek could come up with a plan like that. All right, I've got the truck. When we have him blocked in, we take down the escort and make off with the prisoner. Why don't we just kill the fucker there and then? That's probably what Derek would have told you to do in his smacked out state. Problem is, he's the first one they'd talk to if that happened. We gotta make this look like a prison break. Great. They're leaving the old cop shop now. Should be at the booth tunnel soon. So in the end, that's just my personal um, opinion. I think that Derek had actually snitched on Jerry. And to wrap this video up at the end, I know what some people are gonna say, but professional, when you did your playthrough, you killed Francis, not Derek. Why? The reason that I killed Francis um, and not Derek when I did my playthrough is because I consider Francis worse than Derek. And if you want to know why I considered Francis worse than Derek, then watch my video. Nico has to decide who to kill, Francis or Derek. I'll link that at the end. I explained that in that video why I killed Francis. However, though, I make that point in this video and I'll make it now. If I found out that Derek was the one who snitched on Jerry... I would have killed um, Derek, but the reason I didn't kill Derek in the end is because even though I was 95% certain that Derek was the one who ratted out Jerry, I was not 100% certain. So there's a lot of suspicious stuff. He's he's um uh, he has done it numerous times. He's he's ratted on people in America. He's ratted on people in England. He's a drug addict. Um uh he's um uh he lies to Nico about his story. He pretends like he's not a rat when in fact he is. There's numerous red flags about this guy. You know, the the fact that he's constantly skipping the country, he's coming back to the country, he's constantly traveling a lot. There's a lot of red flags about about Derek, but even though there's a lot of red flags about him and he's very suspicious and he probably is the one who read it out Jerry, there isn't 100% concrete proof that he is the one who did it. And so because of that, I decided on killing Francis because I was not 100% sure that Derek was the one who ratted him out. But if, if I was sure, then I would have killed Derek. Because Bucky and Aiden, okay, fine. Those guys deserve to be in prison. Jerry was a criminal as well, but Jerry, he didn't do anything to Derek. Jerry was um, Derek's brother. 
And so that that's one of the worst betrayals. And if Packy found out about that, Packy would have never forgiven Derek. Packy would have possibly even um, uh, killed Derek. And in GTA 5, to wrap this video up, if you take Packy as a crew member in the Polito score, he actually mentions Derek, and he will actually say um, this about Derek. You know what? My first job ain't that interesting. I think I was spotting for my brother's scores in junior high. What is interesting is my biggest job, the Bank of Liberty City. Ah, oh, shit, yeah. I heard you were part of the crew that took that down. I ran the crew. It was me, my brother Derek, God rest his soul, my pal Michael, God rest his soul, and another boy, Nico, who's probably dead too. They're all dead. Must have been jinxed, huh? All I know is I live to tell the tale. We went in, my pal Michael gets shot. I take down the hero who did it, then we blow the vault, take the money, and meet half the LCPD coming out. The cops are outside, they're in the street, down the alleys, they're in the subway. We just keep moving and shooting, moving and shooting. Climbed out the subway, found a car, and we were away. So Derek's dead. And now the thing is, though, is some people are going to say that Nico killed Derek. Not necessarily. Derek could have died from a heroin overdose. Heroin is a very dangerous um, a drug. You know, overdose rates on that drug are very high. So Derek could have easily died on a heroin overdose in those five years between GTA 4 and GTA 5. That wraps up this video. Let me know if you guys agree with my perspective. I know I spent the most time to talk about Derek, but that's what I wanted to do here because I wanted to explain. I really am suspicious about this guy. I'm really suspicious of Derek. I think that Derek was the one who read it out, um, uh, who read it out Jerry. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you agree with me personally. If you don't agree, let me know. I wanted to make a theory on why Jerry was in prison, and I think I, I'm onto something here. But let me know ultimately if you guys agree or disagree. If you guys enjoyed this series, please drop a like. It takes me some time to make these lore videos, and I want to make more for you guys. So please be patient, and I will have more lore videos and more character analysis like this. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone. Thank you.